They really said what if muck, but colorful, and dark at the same time. Alolan Muck has solid bulk at base 105 HP, and 100 special defense, plus its 105 attack is not too shabby. It can set up with Curse, boosting both attack and physical defense, and Stab Knockoff hits super hard along with Poison Jabs. We can also run Shadow Sneak for priority, and its ability Poison Touch gives it a 30% chance to poison the target on all moves that make contact. This Muck is just a weird dude that loves spreading poison and becomes annoyingly hard to kill. Look, Gen 7 was a wild time. They were really doing some crazy nonsense with Pokemon. Unfortunately, not a lot of those see that much usage to this day. However, I feel like Alolan Muck is one that deserves the spotlight. This thing is extremely fun. If you're into weird Pokemon just like myself, you should probably hit that subscribe button. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Flygon. Guy's got a kind heart, however, I have an MC with a hammer, and I'm not afraid to bash his head in. However, I am actually kind of, I, I, I lied, I am actually afraid. I do not really want to take an Earthquake here, and whenever you see Flygon, I'm assuming Choice Scarf. So, I just decide, you know, I'm probably not going to want to take an Earthquake here. Even though I can live it, I actually don't have the Play Rough coverage on the Tinkaton. So, I just decide to switch right into the Zapdos, who does come in on an Earthquake nicely. And this actually puts me in a pretty solid spot for momentum. I could potentially go for a Volt Switch, knowing they have to switch out here and grab like a nice spot. However, they do have the Swampert on their side. So, they actually end up going for the U-turn here. And also we see the Life Orb. More importantly, we know that switching from Earthquake means this thing is not Choice Scarf. And that's actually, it's very good intel to know for later. Pokemon's a game of data and knowledge. And us just knowing that that Flygon isn't Scarf is going to help out a whole lot with guessing games later. So, uh, rather than going for the Volt Switch, I decide to Hurricane, knowing that probably a Swampert comes in. Hurricane not only actually lands, but also does get the confusion. So, we throw some ducks at his head. And at this point, we're in a pretty decent spot, getting some solid chip there. And I know that they're not going to want to go for the Earthquake, obviously, against the Zapdos. And what this Swampert's going to do here is definitely go for the Stealth Rock. So, my plan is to go right back into the Bronze Hammer. And uh, they probably go for Stealth Rock. I can then potentially Encore that Stealth Rock so they can't Earthquake me, set up rocks of my own, and then profit. So, they do go for that Stealth Rock, which is fine. I actually don't have any Hazard Control on this team, but this does put me in a spot where it's going to allow me to set up this Stealth Rock of my own. Sometimes, you got to go rock for rock with the motherfucker. So, this thing is confused, which does definitely help us out. And uh, I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go for that Encore just in case they want to stay in. And the Earthquake probably looks nice and juicy. However, they do in fact switch out. They're going to end up bringing in the Milotic. And this thing is always an annoying ass problem. So, of course, Encore does fail. And at this point, we also see this thing activates the Flame Orb. So, with the Flame Orb, this thing is now going to get the defensive boost that comes from its ability. If you're unfamiliar, Marvel Scale does give it a 1.5 times boost to physical defense when it has a status, so a lot of the time you do see Flame Orb Milotic also with Recover, and this thing just, it never dies. So I figured, you know what, I'm just going to set up my Stealth Rock anyway, as I know this thing can't really hit me that hard in return. Tinkaton also thick as hell on the special side. You got the thick ass hammer and also that special defense. So, of course, the Surf doesn't do much. Uh, however, at this point, I can't really do anything to this. So, I just decide if this thing wants to just continue uh, surfing all over the place, I'm just going to go right into the Alolan Executor. We have the longest neck in the damn game. Actually, maybe not even the longest neck these days. I don't know. Neck game goes crazy regardless. And I do frisk up the Flame Orb. I think it's always hilarious when a frisk Pokemon tells you an item that is obvious and we've already seen. He's like, hey boss, there's a, a Flame Orb over there. Like, yeah, I know, buddy. Thanks for the help. Anyway, so... At this point, of course, I come in, take a Surf nicely, and now it's just time to drop some Leaf Storms on that ass. I decide to go for that. With the Choice Specs, it's going to do a lot of damage to literally whatever. Now, the reason why I don't want to go for the Draco is also because of the Alolan Ninetales on the team. As this thing switches in, does take the Stealth Rock damage, makes it snow, except now it's a different type of storm because the Leaf Storm absolutely obliterates my dude. And taking care of an Alolan Ninetales before it's able to... Uh, get up the Aurora Veil is definitely a win. Not only that, because I get the special attack drop, and that's actually going to activate the Eject Pack. So, I just use that thing like a damn weapon. We come in, we blast, and then immediately get to switch out into a different option here, which is going to allow me to go right back into the Tinkaton. I figure this thing's kind of just a safe answer to send in by itself. They can then decide to match up and see what they want to do against the Tinkaton. 
In the meantime, we're just chilling on the empty ass battlefield, having a little picnic, take a bite of the apple, and we are actually pretty healthy in this position. So, they actually end up switching into the Dragapult here. Now, I figure this probably means a few different things. Either they're gonna go for something like a Terra, um, or they're gonna like Dragon Dance and Terra. I decide I'm gonna go for the Encore, really thinking that they're gonna try to set up. Turns out, however, they just go for the Flamethrower. Even with the Life Orb, I'm telling you, the Tingaton just does not die. We take that super nicely, and my Encore ends up landing on something I didn't really care to get it stuck into, but one of the best ways to neutralize a dude like Dragapult is to force it into just going into the same move. So at least knowing that it's gonna be stuck into the Flamethrower, I can kind of work around that a little bit, as they're actually just gonna end up switching out. They decide, you know what? Never mind. They're gonna end up going right back into the Flygon, and uh, we do not care how kind-hearted this Flygon is, I'm still trying to bash his head in with a hammer, except maybe later, because we do end up switching out. Because uh, I just decided to go into the Zapdos on the Flamethrower, I figure I could take that and... Uh, the Flamethrower wasn't really great to lock that thing into, is because I don't have a whole lot that wants to switch into that. However, at this point, the Flygon matchup here is kind of just still weird, because they can't Earthquake me, I can't go for my electric moves. It turns out they're actually going to go for the Scale Shot. Not only that, but it's also not the Loaded Dice, because it only hits twice, uh, but they do get the Speed Boost from that, and that makes this thing scary. Now Buddy's got a built-in Choice Scarf, and he's looking real fast. I do go for the Hurricane, which... I does miss. Sometimes you just gotta raw dog a hurricane, man. I don't make the rules. It's in the snow. However, the only thing that affects it, I believe, is rain makes it 100 and sun makes it uh, 50. But snow doesn't affect it, which I actually had to think about. But uh, I now decide, you know, I should probably get my ass out of here. What I don't want this thing to do is get any more boost. So I just decide I'm gonna go into Tink a Ton here, essentially just as uh, a block for the next scale shot, but also it's going to kind of just function as a sack and then I can get a better matchup. However, they just say psych bitch and they end up going for the U-turn. So, uh, this thing a ton at this point is being a menace, but we're running pretty low on health at this point. And now this allows them to go right back into dragon number two, which is of course the Dragapult. The Stealth Rock is nice because it's kind of, you know, punishing switches a little bit here, getting a, you know, getting some, some chip, which is always nice. However, at this point, I'm kind of in range to where a Flamethrower kills me. I also don't really have a whole lot that wants to, wants to switch into a Dragapult, so I figure maybe there's a chance they overpredict. However, they do instead just uh, melt my ass and try to go sell me on the black market. So, that is fine. Tinkaton does go down. However, that is going to open the door here for... A little bit of uh, a little bit of fun action because as I'm looking at it, Muck has a pretty unique opportunity uh, to switch into a special attacking Dragapult here, and also not only that, but be able to set up here and become an absolutely colorful fucking menace. So I bring in the Muck, and at this point, of course, I threaten this thing with the prospect of a knockoff. However, I definitely want to set up some curses here because. While I've gotten some chip on their team, uh, it doesn't seem like they have a direct answer to a muck, especially if I can boost this thing's physical uh, with the curse here. So, I make my ass a little bit transparent for some reason, and go for curse number one as they bring in the Milotic. So, what ordinarily is a bad defensive answer for me is actually pretty nice here, because with the ability to set up curses, knowing that their highest damage is going to be something like a Surf, I can take those all day long, and uh, already at plus one here, I'm going to be doing some pretty solid damage. Now. Uh, my best answer here is knockoff, since they still do have that flame orb. It's going to do just a bit more damage than a poison jab would. Sadly, we cannot poison the thing because it's already burnt, but I mean, it's kind of the same thing anyway. But uh, they go for the recover there because, of course, this thing has recover. Most annoying damn Milotic. I decide to tell his ass to knock it off, and it does get rid of the flame orb that wasn't doing anybody any good anyway. But uh, it does give us some solid damage here, and at this point, we are looking real healthy. And what would ordinarily be scary would be if this thing was running Scald for the prospect of a burn. Uh, however, we know they just have regular ass temperature water with the Surf. But they actually end up going for the Ice Beam, likely fishing for a freeze, which is uh, some devious shit. We are not going to be turned into ice cream today. We are instead um, melted ass ice cream. So, I go for another curse here, and we are looking like we're in a fantastic spot. Things like my low tick like this, while they do function really well as a defensive utility, they a lot of the time kind of leave you open to being set up on. So now with two curses, I'm looking like I'm, I'm feeling pretty good here. Looking at the rest of their team, um, I'm going to be able to do a whole bunch of damage. So they go for another ice beam, knocks me down to around half. Uh, sadly, the poison jab doesn't quite knock this thing out. It brings it down to red. And even after the burn recoil, it's still going to be hanging around, and it does leave it open to potentially go for something like another recovery here. But 
Of course, we're going to sneak up on him, go for that Shadow Sneak with the priority, and we're able to pick off the Milotic, which is also the scariest uh, defensive mon they've got. And now, Muck is feeling like I'm in a great spot here, because with two Curses and the Stealth Rock chip, I should be in a position to uh, Oko a lot of the things they have left, and also sponge some hits, because with plus two defense and the natural special defensive bulk, this thing is a monster. So, they decide to go into Lapras, and this is one of the mons where the Stealth Rock chip is extremely useful. What is not useful for us is the fact that they are running Protect. They go for the Protect there to more than likely just go ahead and grab another turn of Leftovers. It's actually a really close calc depending on how this thing is trained, on whether or not a knockoff is able to knock it out here. But they get some Leftover Recovery, which also does give us some Leftover Recovery. We're just out here just sharing a nice little fine dining experience. So. Also, one interesting thing about Lapras running Protect is it gives me a little bit more intel on what this thing wants to do, and it's not good news. It means that this thing probably is a Perish Song set, and that is exactly what it's going to do. It's going to sing its horrible, horrible song, which is going to make me die in three turns, and it does at least allow me to go for the knockoff, and it does in fact kill the Lapras. So, while it does get the Perish Song off, it now puts me on a nice little timer here to see if we can <laughs> continue the Muck Sweep before dying to the song. So, the game is on, baby, and Muck is here for it. So, in three turns we faint, however, they have three Pokemon left, so can we make it happen? Tune in next time to Hayden Ball Z. Just kidding. They go into the Dragapult here, and this thing is definitely in range to die to a Shadow Sneak, I'm feeling like and the priority is just gonna come in even more clutch. Sometimes the Shadow Sneak is exactly what you need, but what you don't need is the late game Terra. They are gonna commit a defensive Terra here because they know I have the Shadow Sneak, they know it's super effective, and they go for the Electric Terra on the Dragapult. So it puts the ridiculous Light Bulb on the head, and sadly that is gonna allow it to just barely hang on to a Shadow Sneak. Brings it down to red, but we do actually get the Poison Touch, which is kinda just, uh, the nice little icing on the cake there. Now, also the good news is, while it does now have a stab Terra boosted Thunderbolt, we are especially defensive as tits. We're able to take less than half from that, uh, which is actually super impressive. And then this thing knocks itself out with the Life Orb recoil. It actually would have been more satisfying if the Poison Touch did it, but you know, that's totally fine. Down goes the Dragapult, and we've only used one turn of our Parasong. So we're still above half, and there is still some rampaging to be had with our muck here. So. We do, of course, know that they'd still have this damn Flygon flying around here, and being at half HP, it's not quite in range for a Shadow Sneak to be able to take care of it, and an Earthquake definitely still threatens me even at plus two defense. But what I can do is bust out the late game Terra of my own, and this is the exact situation this Muck is freaking built for. I can go for the Terra flying, bring my Muck into the air. I have no idea how a Pokemon like Muck would react to the gravity of flying in the air. Someone draw a picture of it, please. But uh, I can just basically now float above the earthquake, which is actually amazing. Go for that knockoff and finish off the Flygon. So Flying Terra has got to be one of my favorite Terras to use just because it's such a trump card, especially <laughs> in situations like that. So we're flying in the air. We're a big pile of sludge that it seems like it depends on gravity to stay together here a lot of the time on the ground, but we're in the air this time and that's fine. We also get the Paris Song to drop to one and we are now going to die next turn, um, which is hilarious. Although their final Pokemon is gonna be the Swampert and a knockoff should be able to kill this thing. I can go for the knockoff, actually grab the kill, surprisingly went first, which I have like 20 speed at this point because they probably went for something like a roar. Uh, maybe hoping they would live, or just being like, damn, this Muck freaking got my ass. So, that is the way that Muck can impact a game, and uh, it's kind of just funny killing two ground types at the end there. Muck is absolutely amazing. However, we are not done yet, baby. I do have another match for you guys. This would also now be a pretty good time for me to ask, hey, if you could hit that like button for me, I would really appreciate it. Uh, these multiple battle videos are really fun for me to do, and hopefully you guys enjoy. So... In this match, we've got, uh, first of all, another Milotic, but also a very interesting and kind of, you know, versatile team here. So, let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so Speed Racer McGee over here is going to lead off with the horse. And Mudsdale is it, putting itself on a silver platter here because I decided to lead off with the Executor. I frisk him, find his leftovers, and be like, hey, nice apple you got there. So, first of all, it seems like too good of a situation to just click the Leaf Storm. Surely they switch out here, and I decide to just drop a Draco, which... Almost ends up knocking it out. It brings it down to like 2 HP, gives it some stamina, 
and then uh, it is going to just activate my eject pack. So Executor is like, hey, see ya, I'm gonna head on out of here, ejects his ass out of the battlefield, and now I just switch into something else, which I really did not expect this thing to stay in here, but at least getting that thing down to hey, like literally 2 HP is a pretty good spot for me, because now I can just go into the Tinkaton here. They end up actually going for the Iron Defense. Maybe they thought I would go for a switch predicting them to switch out. However, Iron Defense not gonna help you out too much when you're literally chilling on the verge of death over here. So, after some leftovers, it's feeling a little bit better. However, I can just now go for the Gigaton Hammer, and even at plus four defense, I'm gonna smash his ass into the ground. So that takes care of Mudsdale, and I really expected that thing to go for us. Stealth Rock, no idea what Buddy was thinking, but Mudsdale can be a pain in the ass to take care of a lot of the time, and I am totally fine with that. So now they get the revenge switch, they decide to go into Crocodile. You know, initially I wanted to bring in the Tinkaton to set up the Stealth Rock, but I'm like, I should probably you know, avoid an earthquake here, and I just decided to go into Executor once again. He's like, hey bitch, I am back. I no longer, you know, have my eject pack, but I can actually frisk this thing, get some valuable info here, and realize that it is holding leftovers and it's not Choice Scarf. Again, Crookedile is one of the guys that is annoying if it's Scarf, seeing as it was Intimidate and it, over Moxie, though it's probably not a Scarf set anyway, but at least knowing that for sure is pretty good. So, now I bring this thing in because yeah, Executor is kind of just a nuke button, man. This thing comes in, it, is, it just, with the choice specs, it does some damage. I'm gonna drop another Draco, as they actually end up switching into the Ampharos, and it does less than I would imagine, which probably tells me that this is gonna be, like, an Assault Vest Ampharos, which is rather interesting and uh, pretty damn effective, because it just, it took that nicely. Also, I can't go for another one, of course, uh, because the special attack dropped. So, this time, without ejecting, I have to hard switch my ass right back into the Tinkaton, who can take attacks from Ampharos all day long, and also I just, I still do want to set up uh, that Stealth Rock here. So, this thing ends up going for the Dazzling Gleam, which is interesting because I haven't, I kind of forgot that that thing got that in terms of coverage, but of course Tinkaton absolutely eats it up, and now we're in a spot to definitely go for that Stealth Rock, and Ampharos does actually stay in here. As I get up my Stealth Rock, it's actually going to put it in a position to go for the Volt Switch. Now this thing is, uh, a slow Volt Switch, or just a pivot in general, is actually really nice, because that just allows them to bring in something essentially for free. So now they can just go right back into the Crocodile, and this thing is gonna be a damn menace. I really feel like this thing switches into a lot. Intimidate is not helpful. Precious stuff with Earthquake. My only switch in is things like Zapdos. However, Zapdos can only really hurricane it. And uh, it's just, moral of the story, Crookdown, it did ops. So, this thing, it obviously threatens me with the Earthquake here. I, being intimidated, I know even a Gigaton Hammer is not going to do a whole lot of damage, but I'm like, you know what, I might as well see if I can get a prediction here, or at least get them to overpredict, uh, rather. So, I stay in, and I'm thinking, you know, I probably don't even die to an Earthquake anyway. And they actually end up committing the Terra. They're going to go Terra Poison, and there's never been a more badass looking crocodile. He's got the freaking skull and crossbones on his head. And they do end up going for that Earthquake, which is quite scary, and it does actually end up knocking me out with the critical hit, which could have mattered, could have not. I believe in Earthquake when this thing does like a max of 98%. Uh, so, I mean, having a little bit of chip on the Tinkaton probably had it in a spot where if, if it was adamant, I guess it does kill. So that's fine. It, they don't make the overprediction. And now I'm like, okay, you know what I'm going to do here? Go into the muck and just make them confused as hell. Because it's like, hey, I saw your earthquake and stuff. I would also like you to earthquake my poison type. Psych, bitch, I'm going to go for the Terra Flying. Because you already know we keep them damn balloons on us like it's a damn birthday party out here. I go for that Terra Flying. And now we are going to be floating above the earthquake, which is fantastic. And uh, once again, Schlup is just out here doing it to him. This does allow me to get up a free curse where now with a defense boost, I should be able to take an attack from this thing. Worst case scenario would be something like, you know, the threat of a Stone Edge, which we have not seen any of the coverage on this Crocodile quite yet. And at this point, knockoff, paired with a Shadow Sneak, feels like it probably kills, but I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for another curse. One of the best ways to make this thing super crazy is to just get the double curse up. It doubles our defense, doubles our attack, and after that, Muck is a damn menace. Again, with the, the raw special defense we have, with the curse support, this thing just becomes so annoying to kill and even more annoying to take attacks from because half the time it feels like you get poisoned. So, they now decide to switch into Thicky Vicky over here, who is definitely going to be faster because now, after two curses, my speed is basically negative 10. Uh, it does allow them to go for a Thunderbolt, and uh, it is super effective now that I'm flying, but it does do less than half. Now allows me to go for that poison jab 
and just straight up knocks out the Gudra. Sadly, since we were going so damn fast, the Gooey does drop our speed once again, and uh, <laughs> we truly could not be a slower muck at this point, which is kind of just hilarious, but we don't care about speed, baby. We have the ability with the priority to Shadow Sneak and also just leave stuff and do damage. So now this allows them to go again back into the damn Crocodile, and Intimidate is kind of the one downfall to this situation here, where they probably don't want to stay in here because they can just Intimidate me again, which is exactly what they're going to do. They're going to continue to pivot that Crocodile around because they realize that, hey, hold on, this muck is actually a huge issue. Now, the good news about that strategy for us is that, of course, they have to switch into something to take an attack, and Ampharos comes in and takes a knockoff. And also, if my muck wasn't slow enough for you, we also get static, and now being paralyzed, that halves our speed. So it's like, damn, I'm not going to be winning the foot races out here. And that's mostly just hilarious, but it does bring up the opportunity for us to get fully paralyzed at a time that would not be nice. So, uh, we're still chilling above half HP, which is a healthy spot for our fellow muck to be. Uh, except now they can just go right back into the Crocodile once again. Go for a second Intimidate, which does bring our attack uh, just back to neutral. So, yeah, neutral attack isn't all that bad because a knockoff here is still going to do a lot of damage. And it turns out they're going to go for the foul play. They're kind of hurting their own uh, answer here because with my attack being dropped, it uses my physical attack and damage calculation, and it's not going to be enough to knock me out. So, neither is the knockoff, sadly, be, again, because of those intimidates. Uh, but at least I know that I can take another attack from this crocodile, and we are really just out here ripping through their options. So, they actually decide to save the Crocodile once again. That thing is still definitely a threat. It can come in, do some more intimidating, but we do still have some threats in the back for it. Anyway, now they decide to go into the Metagross. Again, they're running out of options of stuff to switch into, and a knockoff is going to do a whole bunch of damage here. Nearly knocks it out even without our Cursed Boosts. Uh, and it's also going to put us in a spot where, hey, I can actually now try to roll for not getting paralyzed and finish with a Shadow Sneak, which would be... Just the funniest thing ever, because we are fast as hell, psych, we're actually not faster than a bullet punch. Uh, but we do still retain our defense boost, so that literally uh, does nothing, damn near heals us, and now I do not get fully paralyzed, and the Shadow Sneak takes care of the Metagross. I'm gonna be honest, building this team, I did not expect the Muck to be this much of a menace. Uh, and at this point, you just gotta feel bad for the guy, you, you just can't, you cannot kill the Muck, for real. So, again, and now they can go... Back into the Crocodile, and guess what? He's going to intimidate me. My Muck could not be more intimidated at this point. I'm sitting at minus one attack now, all the way from plus two. And uh, I still can at least go for the Shadow Sneak here and hope that it kills. They end up going for a foul play. Doesn't quite do enough for us, and the Shadow Sneak does kill it, which is actually amazing. So kind of funny to see the Muck win the war against the Crocodile. And that thing is finally Cro Crocodile Dundee's ass is gone. And we're also still not even that hurt because foul play as their best damage option there was not really ideal. Again, something like a Stone Edge would have been quite scary, but now they are down to one Pokemon left and you already know it's freaking Milotic. This thing is annoying and I figure one of the best ways I could handle it would be, you know, with like a poison, but then it would also potentially just give it Marvel Scale. But regardless, I go for the poison jab just to see how much it'll do. I actually do get the poison, just straight up from the poison jab, not the poison touch. Um, and it is going to at least do a little bit of damage here. But this thing's leftovers. It's sitting at half HP. And I'm really, I'm out here not doing much. They actually end up, ended up going for the flip turn the first time. Which hits me on the physical side and does nothing. They're probably just frustrated against the muck. Like most people do in fact become. Um, however, this thing probably does have, you know, like a scald or an ice beam. They end up going for the surf. People be surfing with that Milotics these days. I actually do hang on, but I do get fully paralyzed. Which... Now we're in a position where, hey, we're both defensive, and this is just kind of a battle that Muck is probably not going to win, but I will allow Muck to have a nice little rest, because this thing <laughs> has been a damn menace today, more than usual. I was able to essentially just break down this guy's entire team with it, and we also even finished it off with the cherry on the top, which is the, the poison. So, uh, at this point, knowing that they're going to go for a surf, I'm like, hey, I could stay in and just continue. I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go for another poison. I really want Muck to finish this match off. But you already know they do have the recover because my low ticks just always be recovering out here. We do break through and poison jab is just, it's not going to, it's not going to quite cut it. So listen, I just decide, you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm just going to switch into executor here because I have pretty much no reason not to. They haven't gone for the ice beam uh, against the muck yet. So I'm like, you know, the only thing that could ruin this would be, you know, them going for an ice beam. But I'm like, you know, this is, this is fine. I'm going to bring in the tree and the Alolan idiot number two comes in and he's like, hey, uh, what's, 
what's actually what's happening here. I'm gonna make sure you got some leftovers over there. Yep, those are definitely leftovers. And you just essentially just water the tree, make me grow big and strong. And now I'm basically free to just go ahead and drop a leaf storm on his ass. They've already committed the Terra, so there's no shenanigans to be had here. And the Alolan Executor is gonna finish off the game. And uh, we just, wait, psych, this thing's actually faster, able to go for another recover. I don't know what this dude's agenda is at this point, but they're gonna bring it to full HP just to make the leaf storm even more satisfying. So that is gonna finish the game. And uh, shout out to Game Freak for making everything in Gen 7 about slow as hell. What's, what's up with that, by the way? Annoying. But uh, anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.